Okay then, so what is Nextcloud? Well, it's a bit like Dropbox and a bit like Google Drive, but much better. And that's not only because it's free, you don't have to subscribe to it, it's because it runs on your own server, so it's your own personal cloud. And if you don't know why that's good, well let me let you into a little secret. Come a little closer. If it's not on your own server, the cloud is someone else's computer. And do you really trust that someone else? Do you trust them not to mine your data? And do you trust them to keep your data secure? Well, if you don't, then Nextcloud's definitely for you. Be like the German federal government. Set up your own private cloud using open source software using Nextcloud. And don't worry, you're not giving up any type of functionality. There's apps for all desktops, Windows, Mac and Linux. And also there's mobile apps for OS X and Android. So if you're convinced this is a good idea, then let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we need to do when installing Nextcloud is we need to have somewhere to put the data. So for that, I'm going to create a new share specially for this purpose, and I'm going to call the share Nextcloud. And I'm going to make this share a cache enabled share, and then just click Add Share, and done. So now I've got a share on the server specially for Nextcloud. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is we need to go across to Apps. Now we're not actually going to install the Nextcloud Docker container straight away, First, we're going to install a Mario database Docker container, which we're going to use with Nextcloud, because it gives it much better performance. So let's do a search for MarioDB, and we can see the MarioDB container here by the excellent Linux server guys. So we click on the green icon here to install, which brings us to the MarioDB template. And there's not much to fill in here. There's the port here, which the container runs on. I'm going to leave that as it is at 3306. But the important part is this bit at the bottom here. It's the MySQL root password. We need to set a password for that. So we just need to put in a password here. Now it's got to be longer than four characters long. So I'm just going to call it, for the sake of this tutorial, just my password. But of course, you'll choose something much more secure than that. And click apply. So now the server will pull down and install this container. So when that's finished, just click on to done. And now let's go back to the Docker tab here and just click on to the Mario logo. And you can see here there's no web UI for this. This container doesn't need one. But what we are going to do, we're going to click onto console. And what this will do is open up a bash shell directly into the container. Now this is a new Unraid feature to be able to bash into a running container straight from the web UI. In previous versions, we had to SSH into the server first and then run the docker exec command in order to get into the container. So this feature makes our lives much easier. Then we need to type mysql space hyphen uroot hyphen p and hit enter. Then it's going to ask for the password and that's the password that we set up in the template earlier. And I use the really secure password of my password. So just type in whatever you put. So next we need to create a user. And for that we need to type create space user and then in the quotations the name of the user, and I'm calling my Nextcloud, then space, then identified space by, and then in quotations, we need to choose a password. Now, again, I'm using the password, my password for this, but obviously you're gonna choose a much more secure password than that. So then to finish the command, we just put a semicolon on the end and then hit enter. And we can see that's being created because it says query okay. So next we're gonna create a database for Nextcloud. So we need to put in the following command, create space database space if space not space exists. Then we want to name our database and obviously I'm going to name it Nextcloud. And then we need a semicolon and press enter. And again, we can see that's being created, queries okay. So one final thing to do is we need to type grant space all space privileges space on space Nextcloud dot asterisk which is a wildcard space two and then in quotations our username and remember mine was called nextcloud and then space identified space by and then the password that we created for the user which again i used my password so once you've done that just press enter 
Again, we can see that's okay. And that's it, that's all we need to do. We've created our database ready to use with Nextcloud. So just type quit. Now we can just close this window. So now we can install the Nextcloud Docker container. So let's go back onto apps and type Nextcloud. And again, this container is by the Linux server guys. So click on the green icon to install. And we need to change the port number here. We don't want to use port 443 because Unraid actually uses that as it does port 80 for its own web server. So let's change it to 444. And underneath here, the path forward slash data, we need to map that across to the share that we created for Nextcloud. So for me, that's forward slash MNT, forward slash user, forward slash Nextcloud. So with the template filled in, let's click apply and then just wait for it to pull down the container. And when it's finished, click done. Now let's go back to the Docker tab and we can see we've got Nextcloud running now. So next we need to configure Nextcloud to use the Maria database. So let's click onto the Nextcloud icon and go to Web UI. It's quite normal to get this, your connection is not private. So if you're on Chrome, just click onto Advanced and then click Proceed. So now we need to set up a username for the admin account. And I'm using Ed and I'm going to look at the password here just to check I haven't made a mistake. And my password's just going to be Space Invader 1. And you can see here by default that Nextcloud will use an SQLite database. And it says for larger installations, they recommend using a different database. So that's exactly why we set up the Maria database earlier. So let's click onto this drop down box arrow here. And the data folder is already filled in and that's correct. That's what we mapped across earlier in the template. But we want to configure the database. So let's click onto MySQL forward slash MariaDB option here. And for the database user, and that's the username that we created when we were doing our command line work earlier. And my user was just Nextcloud. Now remember to put whatever username you created. You know, Nextcloud isn't just the default thing that you put in. And the database password, I used my password. And I was going to click on the little eye just to make sure I haven't done a spelling mistake. And the database name, again, I called that Nextcloud. And here, the local host, we need to put in the IP address of our Unraid server. And for me, that's 10.10.20.199. And then we need to put a colon and the port number that we set up the Maria database on. And if you can't remember what that is, just click onto your Docker tab. And we can see here the IP address of the server, 10.10.20.199 and the port number is 3306. So just put in the port number 3306 and then click on finish setup. And here this tells us that there are various apps available to use for Nextcloud. We can use them with the desktop for Linux, OSX and Windows and also there's mobile versions on the Google Play and the Apple App Store. So let's close this window and then we'll see the default Nextcloud web UI. The two folders and the two files that you can see here are automatically created when we install Nextcloud. And we can upload our own files and folders in two different ways. We can click on the plus here and say create a new folder. And we can see we've got a new folder here. And if we enter the folder, click the plus again, and then we can upload some files. And I'm going to upload these two here. And now those two files are in the newly created folder. And to go back to our main page, we just click on the home button here. And the other way of uploading the files is just dragging and dropping. So I've got this MP3 here. So if I just drag and drop that, it will upload into the current folder. Now Nextcloud has got some native apps. If we click on this MP4 here, we can see it plays straight in the browser. And if we go into our photos folder here and click on an image file, and that's opened as well. well. Let's go back to the main page. Let's try and open this PDF here. You can see that it just tries to download it. That's because there's no app to open PDFs. And let's have a look at this MP3. Exactly the same, it's downloading that too. But the great thing about Nextcloud is you can actually add apps to improve it. So for that, we want to go to the little icon at the top here and click apps. And I'm going to go down to multimedia here and I'm going to enable this app here, an audio player. Every time we install an app, we have to put in our password. And now that app's enabled. Now I'm going to click on the section Office and text. And I'm going to enable the PDF viewer. 
Now if you click on the next cloud icon in the top left, it takes us back to our main page. And now if I click on this MP3, and it plays the MP3. And clicking on this next cloud PDF, it opens it up in the PDF viewer and it can be read directly in the browser. Now of course we don't have to open them in the Nextcloud apps. If we just click on the three little dots, we can download the file by just going on to download. And by clicking on this icon here, we can share the files in Nextcloud. We can tick this box here and share as a link. But if you look at this link, it's actually a local link. The 10.10.20.199 is my local address. And this is because we haven't set up Nextcloud yet to be accessible from outside of our local network. And once we've done that, the links will no longer be generated with a local IP address, but with an address which will resolve back to our Nextcloud server from anywhere on the internet. So that's what we'll do next. Well, that's what we'll almost do next. Just before we do that, let's just quickly do some customization to the theme of Nextcloud, just to make it look a bit pretty. And to do that, we need to go up to the icon in the top right hand corner and click onto that, and then go to settings, and then go down to theming on the bottom left here. And here we can give our next cloud a name. And I think space cloud is as good a name as any. And here if we click on this button we can swap out the logo that you can see in the top left hand corner. I'm going to use my little space invader logo here. And also I'm going to change the background image. And now we can see a preview of the background image with the Space Invader logo on it and also the Space Invader logo up in the top left hand corner. Okay, so now let's check out the new login screen quickly. So we'll just log out and then log back in. Ah, okay, nice. I like that. Anyway, let's log back in. Okay, so let's go back to the theming section again quickly. And I'm going to change the color of this top bar here. Okay, so I think that looks good. But there's one other thing you'll notice, I've set this color to black. Also the folders are going to be black when we go back to the main page. I'm not sure if I really like the folders black, but I'm going to leave it like that for now. And I'm just going to show you one more thing before we set up Nextcloud to be accessible from on the internet. If we have a folder and we want to share it, we can create our share link. Now remember, this is going to change later. We've got various sharing options underneath here. Now all of these are pretty self-explanatory, except this one here, the file drop. If we select this, I think this is a really useful feature. What it does is it allows someone with this link here to be able to upload files into the folder, but they can't see any of the other files that are there. So it's really useful if you want to just give someone the link so they can send you a file, but you don't want them to be able to see any files or alter any files that are in that share. So at the moment I've got these two pictures in here. So if I open up another tab, and I paste in that link. You can see here it says upload files to Ed into the folder random. So I'm going to drag an image file over here and drop it here. And we can see here it's uploaded that file. That's all I can see. I can't see anything else. But now if I go back to Nextcloud and close this tab and I open the folder random here, we can now see here's that file that I just uploaded along with the other two that were originally here before. So I think that's a really useful feature to be able to have. Now, unfortunately, there just isn't enough time in this video to go through configuring more Nextcloud apps and settings. So let's just close this tab and go back to the Unraid Docker tab and just shut down the Nextcloud container. Now, as this video has now reached 15 minutes long, I think it's a good point to end this video and then we can start the next video setting up a Let's Encrypt Docker container to give us our SSL certificate and to set up a reverse proxy. Now whilst we will be using this to connect to our next cloud instance from the internet, we'll also see how to use it for some other things as well. But for now let's just break it off here and I really hope you found this video useful and if you did then as always please please hit that like button and if you're not already a subscriber then please subscribe to the channel. And I just want to say to all of my patrons out there and all of my supporters a really big thank you, it means the world to me. You guys make these videos possible. And to everyone that watches my videos, thanks for watching. And whatever you're up to for the rest of the day, I hope it's good and I'll catch you in the next video.